My name is Todd, as I said, and I'm the program manager for the uh, Full Stack uh, Web Development Program. And um, my role as a program manager is to look after the entire program. So from hiring instructors to the integrity of the curriculum, to uh, worry about budgets and all those good things. Uh, I do not teach any of the courses. Uh, I look after a variety of programs in learning experience design, information privacy, public relations, digital marketing. So I'm not a content in the topic, but in the, in the course, but I obviously have learned a lot along the way. Uh, throughout the session today, I'll talk about the program in detail, uh, but if you have a very specific question, I may not be able to answer it, and I can always get back to you later uh, if needed. I always say the most important thing I do is uh, to ensure that you guys have a successful learning experience. So always looking at ways to, to uh, enhance your learning, to make sure it's a positive experience, uh, and that's my biggest role. Okay. So this is a general sort of thing, but you know, in the School of Continuing Studies, we have students from all over the world, which is pretty cool. We have like 20 plus professional programs we offer. Um, all of our programs designed by senior practitioners, so people that are in industry who kind of guide us since, as you know, I'm not a, a content expert. Um, we try and accelerate them as best as possible. This program isn't as condensed as maybe some others, uh, but we try, we try to, to uh, build it to allow people to balance life and work and other sort of commitments. And that's why it takes a bit longer to finish this program. Um, there's some other relevant programs, which I thought you might be aware of or not be aware of that you might want to look into, but we have a UX program. We have a learning experience design, uh, DevOps and blockchain. So those just uh, ones that maybe are somewhat uh, similar, not similar, but people in the, in the IT space uh, do sort of are attracted to those. So I did a little uh, Google search and, and found the 2021 top in demand uh, full stack skills. And they're kind of listed here. I won't go through all of them, but I was really kind of, um, I felt really good about when I asked my instructors and I looked at the, the content and I programmed the curriculum that we actually do cover all of these topics. So you're certainly getting, you know, a comprehensive uh, experience in the program because again, we do cover all these topics. Now, one thing I wanted to talk about in terms of people being new to the field, which about half of you are, um, this is a whole nother uh, language that you're going to be learning. And it's impossible in a program like ours or any program that's out there that you're going to sort of do a deep, deep dive in some of these topics. And you always need to be thinking about how do I continue to learn? How do I, uh, how do I learn? Because uh, that's really important because you're going to be doing a fair bit of extra work on top of what the course provides to learn these languages. And that's true for people who have some experience, but if you don't have any experience at all, and this is all new to you, some of these languages people do find challenging, some of the coding languages, et cetera. So I just want to put that up front because I like to be fair and, and transparent that uh, there's a fair bit of, of uh, a learning curve, especially if you're a newbie to the field, okay? I won't go through this slide in great detail, but this is basically our program. These are all the different tools and, and things uh, that we do uh, provide or we teach in the program. Um, I'll leave it up there for a second so you can kind of have a look at that. It's on our website as well, so you don't have to worry about memorizing it or taking a photo. Uh, I will mention the fee, so the fee is $9,600. Uh, you can't break that down to uh, different payments, free payments. Uh, there are no textbooks. The September and January, I've already sort of mentioned in the poll, and our instructors are practitioners, so they're not faculty on campus who spend their days sort of just teaching and doing research. Uh, these are people who work in industry. They build websites. Uh, this is what they do for, for a living, and then they bring that to you in the classroom. This is a typical roadmap, um, and again, it's typical. It doesn't have to be your experience, but most people will have some degree of some sort or college um, sort of credential, uh, they'll get some more uh, specific, you know, credential in full stack or in front end or web development, that kind of thing. Um, obviously, you know, work experiences can be very important, especially in a field like this where your portfolio really matters. So we have some things in our program, which I'll share in a bit, uh, but anything you can do to practice what you're learning, you know, do you have a friend's, you know, softball league that needs somebody to build a new website, you can help with that. Is there some other uh, thing you can do to kind of just practice what you're learning and then build this e-portfolio that you can show to potential 
you know, employers. And then there's all the certification. So there's lots of certifications you can get on top of Google Analytics and whatever the case may be that you may add value back to your, um, you know, potential employers or for your own, you know, knowledge and skills. And here's just some pathways, you know, that we've sort of seen from from people who, um, you know, graduate and they don't sort of start at a job at 125,000. But you know, for for full stack web developers, uh, it's a pretty wide range. So you could be a junior full stack developer, you could be a full one, you can be just a front end developer, even though you've got this full stack experience. Um, um, so anyway, this is sort of what it looks like out there in the real world, and I assume you've sort of done your own research in the field. And it's certainly a growing and emerging field. So as with COVID, everything's moving online. Every now retail has to have an e-commerce sort of site and, and whatever. And uh, we've seen a, a pretty good spike in enrollments. Uh, we've leveled off the, the, the upcoming winter term, uh, but during COVID we saw a nice big spike, which was great. So in terms of the program itself, um, oh, I wanted to uh, touch upon one more thing. So I'm gonna go back to the slide. So the other thing I wanted to touch upon, and I don't think I have a slide on this, so I'll, I'll mention it. But the other thing that we've done in our program is we've built um, a couple of opportunities, as I was mentioning, about the e-portfolio. So one of them is actually a project, which I think I did mention later, but I'll, I'll mention it now anyway. Um, but we do this project where you're building a personal website. So you build a home page, you build like a contact us form, you build some sort of other pages like your e-portfolio stuff. And as you go through each course in the program, you're gonna learn how to do that. And then you're gonna sort of do this project as part of your, some of them are part of your assignments. And what it almost is, it's like learning in real time. So you'll learn about, you know, how to build that sort of main homepage, and then you'll go build it for this project. And as you sort of thread through each course in the, in the program, you'll thread that project through. So it's really a very integrated project. At the very, very end, there's a second project, which is part of the capstone, and a lot of times you're actually working with real companies to develop real websites. It may be just a small part of that website, but you are working with real companies, which uh, is kind of nice as well. So we do try and provide some additional opportunities for you to practice what you're learning um, and build that e-portfolio in a real way. So not just doing a little assignment, but you're actually building a real website that you'll actually uh, own. So that goes back to why do our program. So again, it's a, I think a pretty comprehensive curriculum. Uh, there's a lot of information to learn, um, but you're learning it from front end to back end, which uh, is a pretty good skill and good knowledge to have, especially the way that uh, everything is going online these days. There's the personal website that I mentioned a second ago that that, that thread through, uh, threads through each course. Um, the other thing we try and do is we try and incorporate some soft skills. So, you know, everyone that's in this program when they graduate will have, you know, pretty similar hard skills in, in how to code and build websites. But it's those soft skills that are really important of like how to collaborate because in this field like this you're collaborating with a lot of people um, you have to learn how good communication skills you have to have good listening skills because someone's trying to explain their vision to you and you'll have to bring that to life in a website so we try and add those things to the program so it's not just the soft skills sorry it's the hard skills but it's also the soft skills which make you successful and the other thing about our program which is a bit unique is it's cohort based and what i mean by that is the same students that are in course one are the same students in course two and course three and course four all the way through. So you're really building this sort of network. You're really building um, this sort of community that you can sort of ask people questions. And it's not just even the people in your program, it's also the bigger sort of alumni base because we uh, we all do we do everything through Slack and I have job boards in there and there's a help desk that everyone has access to that's ever been in the program and people post questions and stuff uh, that you know it doesn't matter where you finish the program you can still be quite active and uh, be a part of the programs and, and share the learning back with, with newer students. Who are our students? Well, you guys sort of, I think, explained that a little bit where half of you don't have any experience and some of you have got a bit of front end. We often will have a lot of graphic designers, so some of you may fit into that. Um, again, this is sort of exactly kind of fits with what you guys said and your backgrounds are. And I think that sort of is a nice, um, sort of makes it a nice diverse group. So. Uh, the people who have a bit more experience in certain areas can certainly add value back to the class and share their own experiences. Uh, people who have no experience, you know, maybe see things with a different lens. And when they're building websites, they, you know, haven't learned anything. So they're learning it from a different perspective. So everybody kind of, you know, being in this cohort and, and sharing ideas and sharing feedback 
Um, I think having people with different perspectives, you know, just makes for a more interesting group dynamic. So the way the format of the program works is, and this is the same if it's um, in person on campus at York or if it's more the online via Zoom, but basically you're in class every other Saturday from like nine to four, we'll say, uh, with an instructor showing you content, giving you a chance to sort of practice that. And we've also built in, because we feel it's really important that we've got uh, what we're calling tutors. And these are actually graduates of the program, so they know exactly where you've been and they know kind of where you want to go. And we have open labs. So we use like three hours on Saturday uh, or whatever day that the group decides. And they're there for you. So you can come in with your code. They can look over your shoulder. They can add suggestions. They've got lots of resources they've been compiling to share back with you. So you're definitely, um, I think, uh, pretty supportive between the instructor and the tutor that you should be able to get your uh, questions uh, answered quite easily. Like I said, the number of students uh, after this big spike with COVID has come down a little bit. So the classes are back to about 15 students in a class, uh, which again is a pretty nice manageable number and hopefully you get a lot of one-on-one uh, -on -one attention. So a bit more on the program details. I mentioned some of these things already. Uh, we are at this point for, for January gonna continue live online. Um, I talked, oops, sorry. I talked about the project, which touches every course. Uh, we do use Slack, and the way I build Slack is there'll be a channel, if you don't know Slack, it's like a communication tool. Uh, it's sort of an industry standard, so that's why we kind of incorporate to give you more opportunities to learn uh, what you'll be doing in the real world. And uh, every course will have its own Slack channel, so you guys can have your own internal conversations, you can post your code, people can share feedback, etc. And then we have, like I said, job boards, we've got general help, which everyone kind of has access to. Uh, in the program. There is no application for this program. It's a direct enrollment program. So really you just have to go onto our website and, and kind of check out. Um, so don't worry about that. Easy peasy. Uh, as I mentioned before, we do have a payment plan. So I know 9,600 bucks is, is a fair bit of money to pay in one uh, payment. So we allow students to break it up since it's a year long program over three payments. So a $3,200 at your time of registration, and then you'll make another payment in April before the, the May summer term starts, and another one in August before the September term starts. I mentioned the tutors, but that's uh, there as well. So in terms of learning, so I, I briefly mentioned this, but I'll just speak to it a bit more. So um, it is instructor-led. There's some online between the Saturdays. You'll have to do some things on your own for sure, uh, a fair bit of stuff on your own. Uh, it is also peer-led. So those are our tutors um, and then it's self-led where you guys are also you know learning on your own you're helping each other and everybody learns differently and i always sort of get this question of how many hours should i budget um, for a program like this at minimum of 10 to 15 hours per week on top of the in-class instruction so uh, there's a fair bit of learning that has to have happen as i mentioned there's a big learning curve because it's like a new language uh, very different from like learning digital marketing or some other topic where you kind of live it every day. Understanding the back end of how to like build a website and how to build the database part and how to, you know, uh, do all the different bits and pieces and the different uh, coding. Uh, that does take time. So I don't want to sugarcoat that. I want to be honest and transparent that that takes effort on your part to learn. But, you know, in this field, even if you take, talk to practitioners, um, they're always learning new languages, always some new thing coming out. So after you finish this program, the learning will definitely not stop. The next thing I just want to talk about is just some of the added value things that we offer as part of our program. So um, we haven't done the best job, to be honest with you, around career support. But in the fall, we've actually increased our career support. Uh, we've got lots of um, different opportunities for you in terms of having this cool AI uh, platform that we've just purchased which can uh, look at your resume and give all this feedback same thing with interviewing skills uh, we have now one-on-one -on -one coaches that you can sign up for classes and workshops and things which happen i think once or twice a month uh, so lots of really cool things happening from the career services perspective there's also networking opportunities through something called Ten Thousand coffees which is where you basically kind of go into this platform you sort of say you want to learn more about a certain topic and then you get connected with uh, industry folks. It's actually run by RBC, the bank, uh, but where, again, we pay to sort of have that service, so it's, it's all free for you. Um, 
I don't know if this interests people, but uh, Innovation New York is a, is a department on campus, and they have this sort of one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, sort of mentoring that you can sort of it's a, get to buy it. It's a, it's a it costs like a twelve hundred bucks or something. But if people are thinking about starting a business or have a business idea, they actually walk you through creating a business plan and a marketing plan and, and all that good stuff. So we've had some students, uh, maybe not from this program, but we've had some students who have done it, and it seems to been quite successful. Anyway, so there's other things just to be aware of that happen outside the classroom, which uh, you may find add some value to your learning. Okay. So that's basically all I wanted to share today in terms of um, the program. Here's the information uh, about who to contact if you have questions. Um, I can also do this. I'll do this quickly. But if you wanted to see the website, if you haven't been there yet. So here's our website. You can see January 15th is the next uh, enrollment date. Um, there's information on the program, there's information on sort of the delivery formats and courses and a little more, all the descriptions on the courses. So if you click on courses, it gives you all the descriptions and how that all works. So there's lots of information on our website you can certainly have a look at um, to get, you know, some more information about uh, the program itself. So I will open it up for questions. Just give me a second to uh, get all the questions sort of uh, pulled out if there's any questions. Um, okay, so a couple of questions. Uh, first one from Mohammed. Is this program second career er eligible? Um, that's a good question. I don't really know the answer to that. There's actually on our website, there's at the top, it says, I think, uh, let me go, I'll just show you. So if you go to the funding button, there's some information there about different funding opportunities. I don't know if second um, career is on there or not. But if it's not, then reach out to us and we can certainly uh, give you more information. Or if there's certain requirements that second career uh, requires, we can sort of see if we if we meet those requirements. So we're happy to do that, Mohammed. Mohammed's also asking, uh, would a Windows be best or Mac for this? Um, I don't think it matters. I, I, again, I'm not a content expert, but I don't think it really matters uh, which computer system you use. Uh, we use, again, we use a lot of GitLab, we use a lot of uh, Slack. Uh, so I don't think it really matters. I'm sure students have both, and it hasn't been an issue that I'm aware of. Um, Wade is asking if there's going to be a May start this year. So we had one last year because, again, we saw this huge increase in enrollments. Uh, with the enrollments sort of curtailing a bit and going back to more of a normal level, uh, at the moment I have not planned a, a May start. Um, so just trying to focus people on being in the, the September or January offerings. Uh, that may change, but at the moment it's not scheduled. Uh, wait, sorry if that was your hope. Uh, that's not at the moment in the plans. Uh, Parjad, I think, just asked the same question. Is there a, a summer version? And I, could, I just answered it. There's not. Okay, Paul is asking, um, how well will the program teach us the hard skills for a career? I know coding is a lifelong learning process, but will we be qualified for entry-level jobs with just a certificate? If not, how much additional learning should be uh, budget for after completion of this program? So let me go um, back to my slides for a second. Okay, I'll leave this slide up just as I sort of answer the question. So we both certainly teach you a, a lot of these hard skills for sure. Again, you're building a real website as part of our program, right? So you're learning all these skills and then you're gonna actually apply them in a real environment. So that's definitely happening. I think the point I was trying to make is, you know, for HTML as an example, I'll use that as an example. There's so much HTML code that you can learn. We're not going to teach you all of it. So you'll have to sort of use that time outside of class to do a much deeper dive, right? Um, so it's those kinds of things, I think, Paul, that I was sort of referring to. Um, you know, it depends on how deep of a dive you want to do. But, you know, again, you can spend a whole semester learning just React. And we have it as a couple of modules in one of the courses. So, again, you're going to learn, you know, enough to sort of be able to build the website and build that interactivity using React, but you can spend a whole entire course just teaching that one topic. So I think hopefully that answers your question in terms of, you know, how deep of a dive and, and sort of what you'll be able to do with when you finish. But at the end, you'll be able to easily build websites um, based on your experiences in the program. Uh, so hopefully that helps, Paul. Uh, okay. Uh, oh, yeah, thanks. Good. Uh, let's see. September start date in person only. Um, I live in Vancouver. 
Yeah, so that's a great question, Wade. I don't know the answer just because you know things are changing so quickly with this new variant and everything. Um, we're planning to have we were planning to have courses uh, on campus in January. In some cases, we're going to continue with that. Some cases, we're going to sort of switch to more of, of a live online. The part-time programs are probably more uh, sort of in line to be online, just because not to sort of get off in the topic, but. Uh, we have a lot of international students and they need to sort of in some cases be in canada they want to be in canada to have that canadian experience uh this program is all domestic students so don't really have that same requirement uh but i don't really know the answer for september of what it'll look like to be honest so uh just keep walking looking at our website and you know we'll see what the world looks like uh come closer to uh after the summer yeah Mohammed, if you need something signed for like your like a scholarship or some loan or something yeah you can just reach out to us here i'll just go back to the last slide of the... so here i think uh mohammed the best person is probably our registration team they'd be able to probably help you best with uh, those kinds of things to confirm you're a student and to sort of document anything that the loan folks would need from you uh wade's asking a question how common is remote work in the industry do many people live in vancouver for example and work for companies based in toronto or in the u.s yeah, it's an interesting question, Wade. Again, since I'm not really a practitioner, I don't really know the answer. Um, I would probably say that it's happening for obvious reasons more and more these days. Um, I know I've been working from home for the last almost two years. Um, I actually work for a, um, I do some work for a nonprofit. I'm actually helping them uh, redo their website and we hired someone to do that. And that company works fully remotely. So they don't work at, at all um in an office so i imagine it's quite common because a lot of the work you're doing is probably you know again as a full stack developer a lot of the work you're doing is just sort of independently i mean you may have you know your subject matter experts who provide the content and other people from an organization that sort of have you know uh, the part of the, the process in the team but you probably do a lot of it on your own yeah uh john yes we will share the video back um i think we shared the slide deck as well. I think the marketing team sends that out. Uh, but yeah, we'll definitely share this back. Um, if you want to sort of know anything, John, I can sort of flip to a slide quickly. But if you don't know what you've missed, then it's hard to know uh, what to what I can go back to. But if there's something specific, if you have a question, just let me know and I can uh, go back to it and just repeat it. I'm happy to do that. All right, another question from Wade. First of all, you guys are awesome with these questions. Um, so, oh, I have one other thing to mention, which is really Important. I forgot to mention. Um, do you have suggestions for pre-reading, pre-study before starting the program? Uh, yes, we've recently built uh, some prep modules. Uh, I totally forgot to mention this. Uh, we built some prep modules in CSS, HTML. I think there's a React one, um, and those are all self-directed. And as soon as you you know register in the program, uh, you get like your your username and password. You get access to those for free. So again, we've just compiled some stuff, they're kind of narrated, they're showing some, you know, some screen sharing and stuff uh, to give you a little bit of, of help and support, especially as a newbie, um, there are, the, are those prep modules, which I totally, totally forgot about. So yeah, so we definitely have that weighed, uh, especially if you're new to the field, just to give you a little bit of a, a head start. But I'd say HTML, CSS are probably two big ones. Uh, React is another sort of one that students seem to struggle with a fair bit. Um, here, I can go back to this slide again. Uh, so yeah, so those are some of the things uh, that you can certainly do a little bit of reading, but I think the HTML, React, and JavaScript, are, oh, JavaScript's another one you may want to sort of do a little pre-reading on just to kind of, uh, you know, watch some YouTube videos and stuff, just to kind of wrap your head around the concept if it's new to you. But definitely the, the prep modules, I think there's also one on JavaScript, so I think there's one on that too. Yeah. Okay, well, if you guys have any more questions, I'm happy to um, stick around. But if people want to jump off, it is a little bit after 1230. Uh, I just want to say thanks so much for, for joining us today. Thanks for being a part of, of the uh, the webinar. Thanks for your interest in our program. Uh, I hope you'll consider it. I think uh, there's lots of good learning to be had. And uh, hopefully you'll you'll join us. Any other questions, you know, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, I'll just put this back up. So if you don't remember it. Uh, so here's the, take a little screenshot or you can uh, take a photo. But. Yeah, if you have further questions, just reach out to our advisor uh, and we can certainly get back to you if you have something specific. Um, and yeah, thanks, Paul. I appreciate that. Thanks, Mohammed. Uh, cool. That's great. 
All right, guys, we'll stay healthy, be well, enjoy the rest of your afternoon, and uh, we'll hopefully uh, see you all very soon. Okay, bye.